Welcome to Simply Science from Nature Education. I'm Adam Weiss, and we're here at the Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Lab at MIT with Professor Leslie Kelbling, who looks at how computers and robots can interact with the real world and actually learn things. And I guess right now you're trying to figure out how I could ask a robot in the future to get me something out of the fridge. That's right. So uh, for a robot to do things in your house, it has to be really flexible. It has to understand something about the people in the house and what they do and how everything's arranged, and then try to do what you ask for. Now, I actually own a robot right now. I have one of these Roomba uh, robot vacuum okay. cleaners. And, you know, yes, it's a robot, but it's kind of dumb. I couldn't ask it to do anything besides start, go clean the floor. And in fact, when you turn it on, the first thing it does is drive into the wall and crash. So it seems to know how long to vacuum for and has some kind of algorithm that makes it get most of the floor. But it's not doing anything because I told it to, and it doesn't know anything about the room that it's in. I assume that you're trying to make robots that would be able to do those things. I could tell it, go vacuum the living room, and it would do it faster and better than my current little disk would. Well, maybe. <laughs> uh, maybe it would be faster and better, but certainly it would be more general purpose and more flexible. So there's not a difference in kind between the Roomba and the kind of robots we're thinking about. They still have ways of kind of sensing what's going on around them and ways of taking action by moving motors and a computer in between that decides what to do. It's just a question of being able to take in more information, having a richer understanding of what's going on, a richer understanding of what the people around it wants, and then trying to take the right actions to achieve that. So my robot doesn't know anything about my house. It just knows to turn on and go. These would be robots that would not only be able to perceive their surroundings, but actually be able to learn about them and do things accordingly. Yeah, that's right. So you know, if you ordered a robot from Acme Robotics, it would have to come to your house, you'd take it out of the box, and then you might have to take it around and teach it some things about your house, or maybe it would go around and explore. And it would have to learn your habits and where you keep things and who likes what. Uh, but over time, it would be able to adapt to your household and be really useful, is the hope. So in the refrigerator example, I'd be able to then ask it to go get me something out of the fridge, and it would know where the fridge was, know what was in the fridge, and know what maybe I was looking for versus somebody else was asking for. Yeah, that's right. And it would, it would actually come to the fridge already with some idea of what was in there, right? Like, do you know what's in your fridge? I just went shopping yesterday, so I have a decent idea, but not all of it at all. Yeah, right. So most of us have some things back in the back we're not so sure about. Oh, definitely. Right. So the robot might not know exactly what's in there, but still it would have an idea. And then when it opened the door, for instance, it would look, it would see some things. That would give it some information. Like it might know, oh, yeah, Adam usually keeps the pickles next to the mustard. I see the mustard, so maybe I should look in that shelf. So it could then move things aside, take a peek, try to figure out where it is, and eventually grab something and take it out. And I guess you're not only looking at how it would be able to find the pickles, but how it would be able to pick those pickles up, and not drop them on the floor, and deliver them to me quickly and with, with choosing the right item. Yeah, that's right. Um, and so that, there's a whole range of kind of capabilities it needs to be able to do that. It has to be able to recognize the object, guess roughly where it is in three dimensions, reach around. Um, we can do things, for instance, like reach around to the back of something and, and see if we can feel the handle with our hand and grab it robustly instead of trying to get it from the front where it might slip. So you would have a robot that would then know, OK, this is an orange juice bottle that has one of these handles. Pick it up by the handle. Don't try to grab it by the front and either break it or drop it or crush it. Yeah, that's right. So it would have to have learned something about orange juice bottles from its previous experience, and then it could bring that to bear to the new problem and do it better because of that. But right now, you don't have a robot that can get you pickles. You're working on the theoretical side of this and a little bit on the, the actual grasping and grabbing part. Yeah, that's right. So we use this kind of pickle story as a, as a motivating story. And eventually, we would like to build a system that can do that because it exercises learning, reasoning about uncertainty, manipulation, and it puts them all together in a kind of an integrated package. Well, I think that what you're doing is really cool, and I look forward to the results of it, maybe being able to say, hey, robot, I want a drink. Go get it for me. So thank you very much for telling us about it, and I look forward to the results. Great. It was fun talking to you.